So you, you've heard a lot about Stuart's uh, research in the labs. What I'm going to spend uh, my time discussing is my interactions with him, mostly outside the lab, although a little bit in the labs, as a, co as a physics colleague uh, at Princeton, um, mostly at Princeton, and then as a friend for a lot of time after that. Um, I went to Princeton as an instructor in 1971, and Stuart arrived there a year later. Uh, I first got to know him because I was at that time appointed uh, chief slave. That is, I was the course manager in Physics 103, and as somebody else mentioned, all of the uh, junior faculty were basically TAs. And so I was in charge of assigning people sections. Um, right. I think it made a good impression on him at first because I went into his office and offered him uh, two honor sections to TA. Um, that wasn't by a plan. I didn't know him at all. It was just he was the first person that I had approached. Uh, but it seemed to have made a good impression on him because we became friends very quickly. Um, yes. So his office for the next four years, so he was, I was there from 71 to 77, and he was there from 72 to 76, and our offices were three doors away for that whole period of time. So I got to know him and Joyce quite well. Um, Stuart had just finished doing a thesis, as you've heard several times, as a, on a test of Bell's inequalities, uh, of Bell's theorem, and there, that was a topic that interested me, although I really hadn't studied it that much at the time. Uh, a few summers earlier, when I was working in C.S. Wu's lab, I met one of her students who was doing a similar project. I think, in fact, they're actually competitors, although Stuart finished first. Um, yes, so anyhow, meeting Stuart uh, in, reignited my interest in this topic a little bit, and actually, much to his surprise, I actually read his PhD thesis, um, which I think is a fairly unusual uh, <laughs> behavior. I have to admit, a lot of the thesis was quite boring. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, you know, that's the PhD thesis are supposed to be very detailed, and so the end it was. Um, interestingly enough, Stuart uh, quit the field fairly soon after that, commenting to me, I, I don't know how many, to how many other people, that basically there are too many crackpots in the field, and he didn't want to deal with it. Um, right. Anyhow, nowadays, his thesis experiment can be reproduced in about 15 seconds, but, uh, but he was first, so, and he was right. So that's uh, the theme here is that he was right. So that was important. So I never actually worked with him on an experiment, although, uh, but my wife Inga did on the PEP14 free quark search experiment, so I have some knowledge of, of his interactions with people from that. Um, over the years, though, we would discuss uh, our the projects we were working on and various physics ideas, and uh, would exchange uh, triumphs and tribulations and discussions of uh, the oddities of collaborators and uh, about whom I will not discuss anything. Um, right. Um, he even, uh, oh yeah, so I learned about you know various arcana of nuclear physics from him, like second class currents and isotensor currents and things I never would have learned otherwise. Um, and uh, on, uh, on the other hand, he also con considered working on a pro an idea I had for measuring the pi zero lifetime, um, which fortunately was aborted. I, that one thing I learned from that was it really pays to do a thorough literature search before you <laughs> embark on an experiment. Um, Almost every clever idea that one thinks of has been thought of by somebody else before. And uh, you need to be very careful about that kind of thing. Um, right. I did spend uh, 
one enjoyable evening working with him when he was taking data on his famous 17 kV neutrino experiment up at Argonne. And of course, he wouldn't let me touch anything except the liquid nitrogen door. But nevertheless, we spent an enjoyable evening just being around the apparatus and talking about the physics. And I think that was the kind of environment that Stuart really enjoyed, was immersing himself in the physics and having interactions with his colleagues. Um, Stuart was very gregarious. He was interested in and would befriend almost everyone who would reciprocate and, uh, and who had something interesting to offer. He did not limit his intention to academics, but uh, would befriend almost everybody. He was very friendly with the technicians and the machinists and the secretaries all alike. And I was told that when he graduated from Berkeley, somebody could confirm this, that one of the glass blowers made him a water pipe. Um, <laughs> Right. I, for what use, I have no idea. Um, right. So Stuart was intellectually very honest. I mean, you, I never heard him uh, make a consciously false statement. I mean, nobody's perfect, but nevertheless. Um, and insisted on a similar honesty among the people he dealt with. Um, you could almost hold, you could hold almost, sorry, you could hold almost any opinion and he would accept that. However, he would not tolerate uh, bluff or pretense and would react to that kind of behavior with cutting humor, which, uh, as we've heard, sometimes got him into trouble. Um, Stuart was quite adventurous and certainly more fearless than I. Um, Whatever Stuart did, he enjoyed doing it well, including cooking and sailing and many other activities. We did sailplaning and motocross together. In my case, only a tiny bit of motocross. Um, he thought my motorcycle was a fat pig, whereas he had this beautiful Yamaha motorbike. Um, in any case, um, he had also skydived. That, that's something I would never consider doing. <laughs> Um, I never felt comfortable on a motorcycle, especially on the highway, and so I stopped riding after about a year. It just, it wasn't fun for me, the anxiety. But I, he had a motorcycle forever, I'd, although I don't know how much he drove. In, every day, all right, so, so that was uh, his life. And, uh, right. Once when we were visiting Joyce and Stewart up in Lyle, he uh, thought he would teach me the rudiments of sailing, at which he was pretty good. Also, I, on the other hand, had a great deal of difficulty distinguishing port from starboard. <laughs> and uh, this led to capsizing the boat. Um, fortunately, at Four Lakes Village, where the apartment was, the lake was only about this deep. And the major consequence of this uh, misadventure was that the mast got stuck in the mud. And so it took us a while, actually, to get it loose. Um, but he, as far as I could tell, was not very angry. He never showed. <laughs> I think he was more amused than anything else. Um, right. So Stuart's acceptance of other people's strengths and weaknesses made him a good mentor. Uh, you've heard much more about this than uh, I'm capable of saying, so I'll leave it at that. But I think that his that that was an important feature of his personality that led to him being a good teacher. Um, I found that Stuart had an interesting view of humanity. Um, this is my own uh, interpretation of, of the way he was. His humor often took on a bemused flavor as if he were observing human folly from afar, much the way a Martian would. Um, yeah. Um, In Inga has commented to me, since Inga was a collaborator, that, uh, that this attitude uh, greatly improved the atmosphere in uh, many of his experiments. Um, there was one incident which she recalls 
where, at a meeting where a, a, a senior physicist was questioning a student about why the student had done something a certain way, and Stuart calmly uh, responded, because you asked him to. Um, and uh, that diffused the situation. Uh, right. Finally, I uh, need to mention one important aspect of Stuart, which I think really needs to be stressed. And uh, it's an important part of being Stuart's uh, colleague, and that's Joyce. Um, I th Stuart couldn't have been effective a mentor or a group leader without Joyce's support. And uh, I think, uh, and acceptance of his idiosyncrasies and uh, occasional grumpiness. Um, I'm, well, anyhow. <laughs> I had sometimes had trouble dealing with his grumpiness, but uh, so I can appreciate Joyce's tolerance. Uh, it helped that Joyce also had a full life. I'm sure that made things easier. And I'll just end with one interesting anecdote that quite by accident, and I think I'm retelling this uh, correctly, that they met by accident at the Oakland airport neither of them knowing that the other had got, was going on a work trip. <laughs> um, so in summary, Stuart was not only a great physicist and colleague, but he was a wonderful friend as well.